Welcome to this Building Hope for Tomorrow fireside chat, and thank you for taking some time to show up and learn more about Building Hope for Tomorrow. It shows you care about your church, and I really appreciate you being here. As an added bonus, if you're doing this fireside chat with a group, it's a great opportunity for you to connect with some old friends and make some new friends in your church family too. We've got a nice warm fire going on in the fireplace right here in our bookstore at Hope. And if you didn't know or forgot that we had a fireplace at Hope, you're not alone. So did I. And I was pretty stoked when I found out about it. Now I'm all fired up to get started. And I promise no more corny jokes. So let's get to the good stuff. Please open the information packet you received at this fireside chat and find the Building Hope for Tomorrow booklet. Turn to page three where you'll see a question in an orange box that says, what is building hope for tomorrow? We're building hope for tomorrow to create beautiful, God-honoring and highly functional holy spaces that will open new doors for Lutheran Church of Hope to even more effectively love our neighbors, serve our community, help people make authentic and meaningful connections to one another, compete for the hearts of new generations and carry out Christ's mission for generations to come as a faithful 21st century church after God's own heart. Even if you've only been here for a few years or even a few days, you're an important part of Hope's story. Stories remind us who we are and what we value and why we do what we do. Stories about where we've been together as a church family and what we've experienced in the past help us better understand where we're headed in the future. So in order to better understand the exciting future that God has planned for Hope through building Hope for tomorrow, let me take you back to yesterday to the beginning of the story of Lutheran Church of Hope. Once upon a time, about a generation ago, God planted a church called Hope. A dozen or so faithful folks met together right here in this office building. It's on the corner of 86 and Hickman. It wasn't ideal, small and hard to find and kind of tucked away and hidden in the valley. But when Sally and I moved to West Des Moines and I started serving as Hope's pastor, we tried to make the most of this space. We had our first vacation Bible school here, an animal theme, and there were little piglets running around out here on the sidewalk. We also wrote Hope's mission statement here that still stands today at an all congregation meeting to reach out to the world around us and share the everlasting love of Jesus Christ. When Hope was here, we were small but mighty and on a mission from God. And while we were still in this office building, much to everyone's surprise, including mine, we started to grow by a lot. Still, when our lease came up on this office building, we decided to look around for new space to rent and God led us to the perfect spot, much more visible and easy to find. Hope moved to the Church of the Land at Living History Farms. Moving into the chapel was a God thing and that's when hope really started to grow. Soon we added a second service, a contemporary service. We also had our first Christmas Eve candlelight services at Living History Farms. Nine months at Living History Farms flew by for us and it was time to move. So on June 12th, 1994, we had our last services early in the morning here on a Sunday at Living History Farm. And later that same Sunday afternoon, we had our dedication service for our first new church building right here at 6820 Ashworth Road in West Des Moines. Today it's a Baptist church. It's got a different roof, less windows, but it used to be Hope's Church home from 1994 to 2000. The worship attendance grew from about 300 people when we moved into this building to over 1,500 people six years later. So we added as many weekend services as we could squeeze into it and set up overflow metal chairs in the kitchen, hallways and offices with little tiny tube TVs. And yet people just kept showing up. Back then it became obvious that this church building wasn't gonna be big enough and we had to move again. So we started to look for a new place to build hope. And around that time, my wife Sally and I with our kids in the back drove by a 24 acre cornfield right here on the corner of Ashworth Road and Jordan Creek Parkway. There was just something about this field of dreams and we felt compelled by the Holy Spirit to stop and park and walk and pray and imagine a new church building for hope right here on this field. A few years later, still feeling the Spirit's nudge to plant hope on this field of dreams, we invited the owner of this land to hope. He showed up on a Sunday morning and God captured his heart. After the service with tears in his eyes, he drastically reduced the price of this field just for our church so that it might become holy ground for hope. To turn that dream into reality, Hope embarked on two successive giving campaigns, one to buy this field and one to build the first phase of a new house of worship. And we dedicated the first phase of this church building in the year 2000. 
Fast forward with me now through 30 years and three more giving campaigns to today's chapter of our hope story. In 2024, God has developed hope into a thriving multi-site mission church, numbering over 20,000 members with outreach to millions of people worldwide. And the only possible explanation for this miraculous growth is God. Jesus says in Luke 10, blessed are the eyes that see what we get to see. And it's true. I am even more enthusiastic though, much more so in fact, for the future that God has planned for Lutheran Church of Hope. The best is yet to come. Jeremiah 29 says, for I know the plans I have for you. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. To realize God's exciting plans for Hope's future, it's time for you and me, for us as a church to embark together on a 23 day giving campaign called Building Hope for Tomorrow. Building Hope for Tomorrow will be outreach based, God blessed, Christ centered, spirit led and prayer driven, renovating old parts of this church building and building new holy spaces, all for the sake of mission. Through Building Hope for Tomorrow, we're going all in on outreach. Building plans call for a new two-story youth and mission outreach center and food pantry. We also hope to build workstations, safe and fun hangout rooms for teens, play spaces for kids. But that's not all. We also hope to create a community garden to stock the shelves of our new outreach center food pantry. And we want to buy an outreach bus to bring hope to our neighbors who are in need. This is what we're building because this is who we are. It's our mission. And as a church, we can provide what our wandering, disconnected, lonely, and divided 21st century world needs. 
faith and hope and love, amazing grace, the promise of salvation through faith in Christ, direction, connections, authentic community, meaning in life and purpose. We're building hope for tomorrow by creating outreach-based holy spaces for our community, not just our congregation, and it's all for the sake of mission and love. Hebrews 13 reminds us, keep on loving each other. Show hospitality to strangers. That's what we're building. Let's build a church out of love for the world around us. Let's let our light shine before this world so that they'll see our good works, our lights. As Jesus taught in his Sermon on the Mount, and when they see those lights, those good works, they'll give glory to God in heaven. And they'll get to know God too. Now that's our mission. That's hope. That's our story. And that's why we're building hope for tomorrow. I invite you to get fully involved and participate, go all in, in building hope for tomorrow. Our first goal of this giving campaign is to celebrate 30 years of the miracle called hope. Our second goal, to catch the exciting and clear vision God has given to this church for the future. Our third goal is to grow deeper in our relationship with God, connect more deeply to God and to one another through worship weekly and daily prayers and Bible readings. And then finally, our fourth goal, is to learn to contribute cheerfully to the mission of this church and to building hope for tomorrow so that we can see the next generation of ministries that God wants to point us to in the future. Our approach to giving is biblical, so it leads to refreshing freedom. 2 Corinthians 9 says, Don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a cheerful giver. So that's our goal, that we would all learn to be cheerful givers through building hope for tomorrow. It might be easier for us to, to take the high pressure route, or it might be easier for us as a church to ignore the needs of our community and just build what we want for ourselves as a congregation. Avoid giving campaigns that push us outside our spiritual comfort zones and, and turn church life into nothing more than holy huddles for members only. But that's not faithful, that's not biblical, and that's not our story at Hope. This is our story that we would give our gifts cheerfully simply by praying, Lord, what do you want to do through me to accomplish your will for this church? That's it. No pressure, no guilt, no hired professional fundraisers. It's just between you and God, between me and God, to see what God wants to do through us to accomplish his will for the future of this church. That's our story. Once upon a time, God planted a mission church called Hope in a cornfield in Iowa so that we could reach out to the world around us and share the everlasting love of Jesus Christ. The first generation of Hope's story has been a real page turner. And through Building Hope for Tomorrow, a new generation of inspiring and miraculous stories that God writes for us and through us are about to begin. How absolutely awesome is that? So let's go, Hope. Let's rise up together to humbly and faithfully ask God to start building hope for tomorrow through us. When we let God write our stories, they always turn out better, for now and forever. Psalm 100 says, For the Lord is good, His unfailing love continues forever, and His faithfulness continues to each generation, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Thanks for watching, thanks for coming to this fireside chat, and thanks for being a church after God's own heart. I am absolutely blessed to be one of your pastors, and to be able to do church together with each and every one of you.